Welcome everybody to DMB's Five Minute Briefings. I'm Neil Ishwood, an SME and strategy leader in our third party risk and compliance line of business. In this briefing, we're going to take a look at perpetual KYC, what it is, the benefits and challenges to implementing it. The term PKYC has really taken off in the last 12 to 18 months, but it can mean different things to different people. So let's look at what is usually in place currently. Most companies start with the periodic reviews, and this is probably the most common approach to updating client or supplier files. This means the due diligence check is a snapshot in time of the client or supplier. Then, depending on risk ratings, these will be refreshed, usually on a one, three or five year cycle. For many institutions, the target of PKYC is more of a journey than a complete switch usually starting by layering onto the periodic review, more frequent checks on a subset of the data, common checks being screening for sanctions, PEPs, and adverse media on a daily basis. And this is what we term a hybrid approach. It may also be expanded to some other triggers such as transaction monitoring alerts. Then full perpetual KYC is having all attributes that affect your view of risk of a customer or supplier continuously updated. This will encompass both external data and internal data. For external, you may use business registry information, including directors, beneficial owners, financial statements. It will also likely cover the sanctions, PEPs and adverse media. Internal data would be any form of trigger event you may see, such as transaction events, changes to patterns, like starting to make foreign currency transactions or dealing with higher risk jurisdictions. The ideal scenario is to have anything that affects risk updated continuously. Let's look at the main reasons why firms are looking to move to this operating model. For the majority, this breaks down into three main benefits. Firstly, it's just a lot more reactive to changes in risk. A lot can happen in a three or five year cycle and the business you onboarded can look very different a few years down the line. There are new emerging threats, new typologies, shifts in the world, such as the UK Ukraine crisis. When there are big impacts such as these, it's not possible to suddenly remediate a huge volume of records to see if you are exposed. Secondly, the data aspect combines both internal plus external data sources, and having a wide range of inputs means you have a better chance of capturing the right information. As an example of this, we conducted a proof of concept exercise for a US client whereby they used DMB to monitor ultimate beneficial owners, no matter where they appeared in the ownership chain. They started with a hybrid approach that we showed earlier, whereby these triggers were fed into the periodic review process that was still manual. In one third of cases, they followed the process. So they brought the review forward, contacted the client, but then they didn't get the correct information. So naturally this generated a whole host of queries and investigations where the relationship manager fed back that the client disagreed and there was no changes. However, when we ran through the ownership change, there were a number of instances of changes that were several layers away from the client in the US, and it simply wasn't known all the way through the chain. In one case, a new investor bought shares in a Hong Kong company that was seven layers away from the US. So in addition to frequency, there are advantages to having a wide range of data feeds alerting you. Otherwise, you could be blind to new risks being introduced. And lastly, it can bring resource efficiency. The term we have been using for this aspect is right-sizing your CDD program. You can expand and spend more time on the cases that have the most change and present the highest risk, and then save time repapering files that have no change or manually documenting changes that don't actually affect your risk viewpoint. So why isn't everyone doing this already? Well, it does require a lot of components to be in place to achieve this, namely a foundation of good data strategy, a clear policy that is able to be digitized and rules based and a workflow component to direct and channel the activity and auto process or escalate changes. You also need internal systems and external vendors to have the ability to produce and monitor the changes 
plus the ability to consume the constant streams of data. Last but not least, you will still need a team available to adjudicate and make decisions. This won't eliminate all manual effort, but it will streamline it and ensure it's targeted where it's needed, rather than spending time where there's been no change. Overall, many businesses see the value and ROI in moving to this method, and many are already on the path towards full PKYC. So thanks for listening, and if you have any questions in these areas, please contact us using the details on screen.